Happy Easter, everyone. Now, this Pokemon wasn't planned by us since we usually plan our holiday specials, but a good number of you voted for it, probably knowing it was going to be Easter on the Sunday of this video's release. So next up, we have Lopunny, the rabbit Pokemon. How very festive today. This Pokemon is most likely best known for its pre-evolution as Don's Baneary, who also had a pretty big crush on Ash's Pikachu, much to Oshawott's dismay a couple of seasons later. Anyways, we want to find out how this Waskoli Wabbit did competitively, so today we ask, how good was Lapani actually? And in this video, we'll be going over these competitive formats. Unfortunately, Lapani does not have what it takes to keep up in DPP OU, as it doesn't do anything notable offensively or defensively. It simply struggles with just about every aspect of the metagame. Thus, it finds itself in underused, and at least there, it packs a plethora of tricky support moves that can really throw the opponent off, like Thunder Wave, Heal Bell, Baton Pass, Encore, and of course, Switcheroo. What really makes this last move dangerous is Lapani's ability Clutch. This allows Lapani to operate without the constraints of the item, such as switching moves with a choice scarf or not taking damage from life orb so that it can pick its spot against an opponent who also will not know which item it is. For example, a choice scarf Pokemon would not want to be given a flame orb and Clefable would not want to be given a choice scarf. Lopini can cause havoc by using substitute to force the opponent's hand or even straight up baton pass to a threatening teammate. It can even create opportunities for itself by switching in and encoring something like stealth rock or a healing move or even just threatening to. And again, it can choose when it wants to unleash its item. Its exceptional speed by UU standards lets it pull this off with aplomb. But having said that, Lapani is not exactly a UU staple. Pokemon that rely exclusively on trickery are rarely consistently successful, as once an opponent becomes accustomed to their tactics, they are less effective, and offbeat tactics are the only way Lapani is going to succeed, given its typing and stats. This isn't to deride it as a gimmick, because it does have a legitimate niche, but there is a reason it is a rare presence in the metagame. It is also difficult to design a team to gain a concrete advantage out of what Lopani offers. While it can certainly annoy the opponent, too much of what it pulls off in any given game is dependent on the opponent's team. This, in addition to its complete lack of any semblance of defensive utility whatsoever, is why many players prefer more consistent tactics. However, for those who want a lesson in trickery, Lopani went down in history as a unique member of DPP UU, one of the tier's Pokemon most capable of completely throwing the opponent off and making them feel as if they just slipped on a banana peel. Lopunny gained a buffed Healing Wish in the 5th generation, giving it a much appreciated extra layer of depth to its bag of tricks, which otherwise remained the same. But sadly, everything else got a lot stronger, and its lack of defensive usefulness was too much to deal with. Thus it dropped all the way to never use, and even there it was fringe, because having a slot that did nothing but support was often a hindrance when every team member was important in staving off the powerful threats of the metagame. As a result, it wasn't seen at all, even all the way down here, such as life. Now on to Gen 6, pretty much nothing changed for Lapani and XY, but come Oraz, it finally had life breathed into it as it gained a terrific mega evolution that launched it into top threat territory, gaining tremendous attack and speed alongside a fighting type and stab, letting it function as a terrifying physical attacker that blew past many popular offensive Pokemon such as Keldeo, Thunderous, Tornadus T, Weavile, and Superior, not to mention all its fellow OU Megas besides Alakazam. The Stealth Rock resistance was nice and made it difficult difficult to wear down, and unlike Mega Metacham, it had Scrappy, and as such, it utterly smashed through Mega Sableye. Thanks to its speed, power, and fake out for free damage, it had a tendency to dominate other offensive Pokemon and was impossible to switch into, thus posing a major threat to hyper offense teams. Its newfound dark resistance was invaluable, since this let it resist Sucker Punch from the Mighty Bishard, a staple of this team's style. Lopunny even sometimes traded in Ice Punch, its standard last move, for Quick Attack to truly lock these teams down and get the most damage possible when revenge killing alongside fake out. In a game of inches like Pokemon, this could be the difference between finishing off that boosted Mega Charizard X or Belly Drum Azumarill or being swept by it. Quick Attack also beat Talonflame to the punch. Most bulky offensive teams had to rely on Rocky Helmet Garchomp and Landorus T as well as Choice Scarf Landorus T to deal with it. But given the aforementioned propensity for Ice Punch, these were not the most reliable methods. Even something as bulky as Mega Scizor had to invest heavily and 
still be careful against the mighty high jump kick, especially with Stealth Rock up. And given how many players love pairing Lopunny with spikes, things could get out of hand quickly, especially if the Lopunny player was appropriately aggressive in getting it in. All that said, things were not entirely rosy. We've mentioned how Lopunny shown against faster offensive Pokemon, but it wasn't all that bright on the other side of the spectrum. It struggled a lot more against bulkier Pokemon that featured on more defensive teams. The best example of this was Clefable, who was immune to Stealth Rock and avoided the two-hit KO from return. The most that could be said for the matchup was that Lopunny consistently forced it to soft boil, lest Clefable not be able to switch into it again later, making for a free switch to a teammate, and that one critical hit would spell Clefable's end, but this did not detract from the fact that more often than not, Clefable would stand in Lopunny's way. Also, Clefable wasn't exactly the only thing Lopunny struggled with either. Slowbro was even more impossible for Lopunny to get past in both its regular and mega forms, while Rocky Helmet Tangrowth was just as immovable, and traditional walls like Hippowdon and Skarmory stood in its way as well. Even Heatran and Ferrothorn, two mainstays of these teams that wanted nothing to do with high jump kick, carried Protect incredibly often, and the 50% recoil if Lopunny kicked into a Protect was just devastating. To say nothing of the mind games, if they decided to take a risk and attack as Lopunny tried to predict their Protect, and it was entirely in their favor, since Protect was almost entirely riskless. Many players preferred their Mega Slot to be able to punish defensive teams in some way, and Lopunny could not deliver on this front. What's more, some of these Pokemon, especially Clefable, were not uncommon sights on offensive teams. And finally, the aforementioned Rocky Helmet Grounds, despite being weak to Ice Punch, would wear down Lopunny significantly, and often could do it twice, since one punch would not KO them, and they could pivot out after Lopunny had been neutered by going to minus one attack. Choice Scarf Lander's T was also incredibly common, and while it feared Ice Punch a lot more than its defensive counterpart, it was a good check that was able to keep offensive momentum. Mega Scizor did a decent job staving it off as well. All in all, these examples serve to show that even offensive teams had weapons against Lopunny. But with that said, you'll also notice that they are not foolproof, and a smart Lopunny user could abuse them with proper predictions and or teammates. For example, you could have Needle King as a teammate, and Needle King severely threatens every single one of those Pokemon. Lopunny also began to find use on defensive teams, whose fat members preyed on weak walls for spikes, letting Lopunny break through them later. Bar Clefable, of course. Lopunny also had excellent synergy with these defensive teams for its ability to handle hyper offense, which could often overwhelm bulkier squads. And when all is said and done, Lopunny was a definitive part of the Oraz metagame, having a significant niche in being to out offense the increasingly intense Blitz teams of the sixth generation and forcing them to adapt to its presence in the metagame. Mega Alakazam sometimes even ran Protect solely to stuff its fake out. So yeah, Lopunny was a big deal. And while another fake out using normal type Mega named Kangaskhan tends to be more popular, Lopunny's excellent speed, Scrappy, and Fighting Stab give it a niche in 2015, namely being able to dominate Mega Kang. Being able to defeat common Kanga check Terrakion and resist Mega Mawile's Sucker Punch is pretty great too. It could even not Mega Evolve and keep its limber ability to guard against Thunderous's Thunder Wave. Its bevy of support moves could be used to great effect by creative minds as well. But of course, if your competition is one of the unequivocal best Pokemon in the tier, you're not going to be that common, but Lopunny had its moments. Using it were, and I apologize if I butcher any of your names, Aditya to reach second at Indonesia's first premier challenge, Eugene Tan to reach third at the Malaysia Asia Cup qualifier, Juan Hao Lee to reach sixth at the Washington Regionals, Ben Thomas to reach fifth at the Georgia Regionals, Ivan Macias to reach top four at the Colombian Regionals, Christopher Schumacher to reach 12th at the German Nationals, Rachel Anon to reach 18th at the UK Nationals, John Hugh to reach 32nd at the U.S. Nationals, and Gavin Gentry to reach top 16 at the U.S. Nationals Seniors Division. Overall, Lopunny had its place in 2015, and perhaps would have been explored more had the metagame lasted. But unfortunately, it was quickly forgotten among the mighty restricted Pokemon of 2016. But it did have one appearance, with Yu Jing Zhang reaching fifth with it at the Taiwan Regionals. Mega competition wasn't as strict in Sun and Moon, with the more varied metagame not demanding one ran one on every team. And Lopunny stepped up to help deal with some of the terrifying new offensive threats, like Cortana and Tapu Koko. It was especially excellent against Frailer Hyper Offense teams, but it was a generally solid overall pick against the speedy metagame. The new Mega Evolution speed mechanics lowered the need for Fake Out, and thus saw Lopunny experiment its more fringe options, with the combination of Encore threatening something like Soft Boiling Clefable that would normally deal with it, 
allowing it to grab a power-up punch and proceed to dish out some powerful attacks. However, Fake Out and Quick Attack were quite popular to help Lapanid best do its main job, which was guarding against a plethora of terrifying offensive threats, such as Ash Greninja's spamming Water Shuriken, Halucha, Mega Alakazam, or even something like Scarf Lander's T. It was an excellent checkmate Pokemon. Speaking of Greninja, offensive teams being able to so easily fit a Spiker was incredible for Lapani, and the two were an incredible pair for out-offensing opposing offense. But of course, it struggled more than ever against defensive Pokemon since newcomers like Toxapex, Celesteela, and Tapu Bulu had joined the fray, while on the offensive end, Choice Scarf Tapu Lele messed with its priority. However, overall, Lapani was and is a solid Pokemon in the Ultra Sun and Moon OU metagame. Lapani wasn't as common in 2018, but it did appear a few times. Being faster than the lightning fast Tapu Koko was a huge boon. And as for placements, it reached 13th on Lee Sung Hwan's team at the Korean Nationals. Graham Amade used it for a 6 2 record at the Oceana International Championships, using a unique fake tears variant alongside five special attackers for a frightening combination that often resulted in KOs. But there's not much more to comment on as Lapani was clearly French, but just good enough in its speedy niche with a mix of support and attacking to nab. These two placements. And that's it, so how good was Lapani actually? Well, its first two generations saw it as a cunning trickster who didn't have anything else to offer, and as such found its usage to be basically null. And its last two generations saw it mega evolve and become a top offensive threat that makes offensive teams have to go out of their way to accommodate for its presence, lest they be outsped and one hit KO'd without recourse, which is a very real possibility. This also gave it a slight niche in VGC. So once averaged out, Lapani is quite decent. Thank goodness for Mega Evolution, as this is a prime example of a Pokemon very likely to fall further and further into obscurity without it, but thriving as a result of it. Thanks for watching everyone, happy Easter, and as always if you liked the video and you want to see more, be sure to subscribe to False Wipe Gaming for more weekly Pokemon content. And as for the comments, I want to know what do you think about competitive Lopini, how would you change it, and everything else I say in every other video. And if you want to vote for next week's Pokemon, go to the community tab of this channel and comment the Pokemon you want to see on the latest post that is in the community tab, which should go up around the same time as this video's release. Shout out to the patrons for continued support of our videos and thank you to everyone else watching as well. And follow my crew on these social media platforms. And that's all I got. See you next time everyone.